2016 was the first time I got my hands on this, the $100 Audio-Technica AT2020. Being a go-to budget studio mic for vocal recording over the past decade, this microphone has rightfully become the most popular condenser XLR microphone under $100. But this year, things have changed. Over the past month, I've been able to get my hands on a few hundred dollar condenser microphones, and I think we might have a new winner. For many beginners, you might be in the market or looking to upgrade to one of these microphones. Keeping in mind this could be the first studio condenser microphone for your home music studio, I like to focus on five key areas. Most importantly, sound quality. As many of you know, we will be doing a sound test comparison between these microphones and if you want to have a look at any of these on your own, links can be found in the description below. Also, these are condenser microphones, so they will need 40 8 volts of phantom power to function. There's a lot to discuss regarding each microphone, but I think it would be fun to start with the sound test comparison. Oh, there was heaven in your eyes. I was not baptized. Everything's alright when she calls me back. She calls me back. Lost for a long time. Two parallel lines Everything's alright when She calls me back She calls me back Oh, there's heaven in your eyes I was not baptized Everything's alright when She calls me back She calls me back Lost for a long time Two parallel eyes Everything's alright when She calls me back She calls me back Everything's alright when She calls me back She calls me back Everything's alright when She calls me back She calls me back Everything's alright when she calls me back, she calls me back Everything's alright when She calls me back, she calls me back Everything's alright when She calls me back, she calls me back Okay, now that we have an idea of what each microphone sounds like, let's have a look at the rest of the key areas to help us decide on which microphone is the best under $100. First, the X1A by SE Electronics. In terms of design, it's not my favorite, but it gets a few bonus points for the roll-off and attenuation on the front panel. In terms of build quality, the casing is solid metal, but there is a little bit of flex on the grill, which is not too good. The mic capsule is 16 millimeters in diameter, which is pretty standard for microphones in this price range. In terms of accessories, the only thing you get with this microphone is a basic stand mount, and it's also plastic, which is not great. And lastly, in terms of sound quality, I do like the warm tone of this microphone, definitely a touch more low end, and I feel that's what makes it stand out compared to the other microphones, but overall a good budget microphone for vocal recording. Next, the Berry B1. In terms of design, it's definitely not my favorite, but it does have roll-off and attenuation on the front, so a few bonus points there. Regarding build quality, the microphone and accessories offer a solid metal feel, except the pad switch on the front, it feels a bit cheap. Speaking of accessories, the B1 comes with a solid carry case, a metal shock mount, and a wind cover. The B1 does come with a 26mm capsule, which is a standout at this price point and 
in terms of sound quality, the B1 definitely has a crispy tonal pickup. When I was singing a quieter vocal, it sounded very detailed, but it did sound a touch tinny as I got louder. Moving on to the Audio Technica AT2020. In terms of design, this microphone is iconic to me. You literally see this mic in every home studio. Regarding build quality, the metal casing and the grill is as solid as it gets. The AT2020 capsule is 16 millimeters in size, which is again pretty standard at this price point. Looking at accessories, you get a metal stand connector and a carry bag, and the accessories are very well made. And lastly, in terms of sound quality, the AT2020 offers that detailed, crispy sound that has definitely made it a best seller for a reason. Next, the P120 by AKG. In terms of design, this microphone is simple yet sleek. Not to mention the roll-off and attenuation on the front panel. Regarding build quality, the P120 is just as solid as the AT2020 and unlike the B1, the switches feel pretty good too. This microphone also offers a 16mm capsule which again is standard at this price point. Regarding accessories, the P1 only offers a basic stand connector but unlike the X1A, it does have a metal design. And in terms of sound quality, the P120 sounds really clean. Maybe a touch bright but overall a good sounding microphone. And finally we have the newly released MA67. To be fair, I think I left the best for last. In terms of design, this mic in its shock mount is a clear winner for me. In terms of build quality, the MA67 offers a solid metal casing and grill. For me, only the XLR cable and the carry bag feel a little lesser in quality. Speaking of these accessories, this mic comes with a silver shock mount, hydro pop filter, XLR cable and a carry bag. Behind the grill, we have a 34mm gold capsule which is unheard of at this price point. And in terms of sound quality, the MA67 could definitely take on microphones double its price. At $90, it actually offers sufficient low end and the mid-range is quite smooth and the high end is actually detailed and crispy without ever really getting tinny. It's a really soothing sounding microphone. So now that we've covered each microphone, the final breakdown gives the SE X1A a 3 point star rating, a 4.1 rating for the Behringer B1, the Audio Technica AT2020 gets a 4.4 rating, a 4 star rating for the AKG P120 and the winner of best microphone under $100 goes to the 4.8 rated MA67. Remember, when it comes to buying a specific microphone, the most important thing to focus on is the sound quality. All these other factors regarding accessories, build quality, features, design, these are usually a preference thing. But having a look at the ratings again, do you think the MA67 is the deserved winner?